Hello, this is Life Coach Angelia, um, and uh, we were uh, presenting um, the uh, Healing Families Lives Teen Pregnancy Life Coaching Program training. Um, and last time we had uh, left off on, um, uh, let's see here, uh, the strengths-based approaches, uh, you know, for helping pregnant teens. Um, and now we're going to start on uh, key terms and concepts. Uh, when you start out on like the first day, um, you want a strengths-based approach because you want to help them. Um, in as is, you know, you might know from school and work and you know going to college and everything. Um, you do good at what you're good at and what comes easy to you. So you're going to have to first identify this teenager's strengths, what they're good at, um, what they're, you know, comes easy to them. Ugh, so that's easier to build on, you know, for them. So you're going to have to get to know them a little bit and find out what they like, what they're good at, what their best subject in school is. Um, so you can build from there. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, their attitude. Um, what is their outlook, you know, for having this baby? Um, Unfortunately, there are cases where they don't want to have the baby, um, but the parents are very religious and insist that they have to have the baby. That is sometimes very unfortunate for the child, um, and sometimes the parents will take over and raise the child um, as if it's a sister or brother of this teenager. Um, yeah, I've seen bad ends to that situation, so I just really don't recommend that. Um, but, you know, maybe they're happy. Maybe they're in love with their boyfriend right now. Um, and they want to have this baby, you know. Or maybe they're down because they feel like this baby is going to, you know, keep them from doing what they want in life. Um, and then it's your job to encourage them that, no, that's not the case. Just because you have a child, um, you can get a babysitter or a great market babysitter or whatever you work out. But you can still, you know, go to school um, I, like I said, I had a girl I went to high school with, got pregnant in the ninth grade, and her parents were great. They set her up, you know, um, she went to college and became a lawyer, you know. So, you know, uh, having a baby when you're a teenager is not the end of the world, you know, and you need to tell them that um, so that they can have a better attitude about the fact that they are a pregnant teenager. Um, now, practices, um, you need to get them to where they're doing something for themselves every day. It's easy to get depressed if you're a pregnant teenager and your family's coming down on you and, you know, society and the school administration and teachers are coming down on you and other kids are making fun of you. You know, it's easy to get down. So you need to, you know, have make sure they have a schedule. Make sure they have regularity and, uh, you know, um, predictability in their life. Um, so that they can, you know, go about the business of being um, a teenager, getting ready to be a parent. Um, like I said, building on their strength. They, they're going to have strengths, things they're good at, things they like. Um, and that's what you want to encourage. You don't want them to give up on life just because they got pregnant. Let's face the facts. A whole lot of people get pregnant that don't plan on getting pregnant. It's not the end of the world, you know. Um, so you want to build on their strengths, what they're good at. I'm um, going to encourage them to continue to do these things, you know, that, you know, they don't, it's not like people believed in the old days. Once you get pregnant, your life is over. That's it. It's not, you can't do anything for you anymore. It's all about, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, in fact, all of psychology um, and any human development uh, studies you want to look at, happier parents make happier kids. So if you're happy with your life, your kid's going to be happier because they see you being happy. Get it? Happiness is contagious. <laughs> um, competencies, what they're good at. Because not everybody's good at the same things. Uh, I've come across recently some people that are seriously lacking in some areas of competencies. You know, um, and that's something you can work on with them. You know, if they're lacking in maturity, because a lot of them are, you know. Um, that's something you need to work on them with and bring that up. You know, so look at what they're competent at and what they're good at. Um, that's That can go back into the strengths pile that you're, you know, building on. 
and things they're not so good at and things they're not so competent at. And those are the things you can work on, you know. Um, accomplishments, you know. Talk about their accomplishments. Well, you, you know, you did this. You can do this. You know, this is this is no harder than that. You know, um, give them confidence. They're going to need it. <laughs> um, goals. What are their goals in life? Like I said, just because you get pregnant doesn't mean your life is over. What are your goals? You know, um, and like I said, I'm a big outline person. Everybody that's worked with me knows outline. <laughs> but outline. What are your goals? What are the steps you need to get there? Um, and like I said, in your outline, you're going to find there's going to be places to add things or, you know, you redo it or whatever. But you're going to find out things that you didn't know before as you go along to achieve your goals. So, you know, you do this, but then, oh, in order to do this, I have to do this and this and this. So, you know, it's always an adjustment to your outline until you reach the goal. Um, motivation. What is their motivation you know, to do this. Um, and the motivations are important. Um, I had a little adventure here lately with someone um, who lied to me and disrespected my feelings. Um, but I know what their motivations were. Um, so I didn't come down on them. Um, and I think because they kind of drove themselves crazy, uh, they've learned a little bit of lesson there. So I don't have to come down on them. <laughs> but anyway... Um, you know, and what is their motivation? Hopefully they want to keep this baby if they're going to keep this baby. What is their motivation? What do they want out of this? That's important to learn because sometimes, you know, I want Joe to stay with me. That's not a good motivation because Joe don't have to stay with you just because you got pregnant with his baby. Sorry, facts of life. Um, Commitment to identify and make use of resources, natural supports. Um, there are resources out there, you know, neighborhood centers um, and, uh, you know, most all doctor's offices can, you know, hook you up with uh, resources that you need um, because you're going to need uh, prenatal care. Um, you're going to need an obstetrician. You know, you're going to need a pediatrician. You're going to need uh, to be able to get the supplies you need for a baby. Um, and if you can't, you're going to need to get the help for that. Um, so you need to identify the supports that they're going to need um, and then hook them up with these supports. You know, as their coach, uh, that is something you certainly can do. Now, is it your job to schedule appointments for them and all this stuff? No, 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 that is not. And you don't do it um, because that fosters dependence. They are to do it themselves. Mental health. <laughs> now. If they didn't plan on getting pregnant and they got pregnant, that is going to be a shock. You know, uh, you can actually have PTSD from being pregnant where you check out, you're in denial. I'm not pregnant. They say I'm pregnant. I'm not pregnant. I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, that can happen. So that is also something to be on the lookout for. Um, if you suspect there's some mental health issues, by all means, uh, have a mental health professional as a referral and refer them, you know, to counseling and therapy because it's better that they get that done now while they're pregnant than wait until after the baby comes. Then they have to deal with getting their head on straight and raising a child. So it's better that they get that done before the child is born. Wellness. They need to know how to take care of themselves, you know. Uh, you can find information on wellness, you know, all over the place now. You can send them to a website or a doctor, or nutritionist, whatever. But you can get any, all kinds of information on wellness to give them uh, on how to take care of themselves. You know, personal hygiene, eating right, exercising appropriately for a pregnant person. You, you can get all this information and give it to them in handout form. Uh, or like I said, have referral people, you know, who might want to give you handouts or even come, you know, one time and say, hey, here's what you do um, and give them their card, you know, because people like to do that. You know, they like to have partnerships and that's good and work with people. Um, and then that adds, um, you know, a depth to the experience for them that like this is something to take seriously. This is not just some chick in here talking to me, you know, that this chick is serious because she's, you know, making it you know, worth my time and her time, and she's bringing other people in to help me, you know, and that lets you know they're serious.
you know, we're just not talking to hear ourselves talk. Um, coping. Different people are <laughs> good at coping. Um, some others not so much. Um, so you kind of have to feel them out on that. How are they coping with this? Um, and again, if they're not doing well at all, you might want to refer them to a mental health professional. Because like I said, it's better that they, they get their head on straight while they're pregnant than before, than after they have this child. Because you want them to be the most functional parent that they can be. And, you know, they're going to be immature if they're a teenager. Let's face the facts. Um, they're not finished growing yet. Their brain's not wired all the way yet. Their hormones are still kicking. That's how they got pregnant. Um, so, you know, that's something to deal with. Um, if they're not coping so well, by all means, refer them to someone so they can get that taken care of because they're going to be somebody's mom, you know. And boys want to get in on this sometimes too, or dad. So, you know, some boys like to attend with, you know. There's some good ones out there. Um, prevention approaches. Um, now that they know how to get pregnant, um, it's a good thing to teach them how not to get pregnant again. There's a lot of misinformation in the teenage community on how you can keep from getting pregnant. You know, uh, no saran wrap does not work. No rubber bands do not work. Um, so, you know, you need to teach them prevention. Um, some youth are under long-term stress. Um, if there's abuse in the family um, or they're in an abusive relationship, um, they've already got stress on their life. Um, there are places, homes for pregnant teens uh, here and there. Um, you might have to do some work to find one. Do your Googling. Um, but there are places that you can refer a teen who is pregnant and they're not living in the best situation. Uh, because, you know... You need to put it to them like, um, if this is happening to you, this is going to happen to your child. You got to stop and get out. So you need to find those resources in your community um, so that you have that um, to tell them. Um, at risk, if they're doing drugs, alcohol, things like that, of course, um, they are considered at risk. Um, and you need to get them to a treatment program so they can stop this, so they can have a healthy child. Now, um, if their mind is dead set on not having a healthy child, um, I know of a, a teenager recently who drank and drank and drank until she lost her baby. That, I do believe, was her goal. So, that's sad, um, but, you know, if they want to do that, they're going to do that. Um, and you, there's nothing that you can do to stop them. Um, so don't look at that as a failure on your part. That is their determination to do that. And, you know, that's a shame. And they're probably going to regret that much later in their life um, when they realize, you know, that's what they did is to kill a person. Um, but by then, of course, it's too late. Um, youth with sexually transmitted diseases... Um, it's going to be a harder, you know, uh, birth, um, they're going to have to take special precautions. Um, that's something that needs to be, you know, worked on, uh, while they're pregnant. Um, so that's something to discuss with them. Um, and you know, if they have no idea, but they, you know, you can get handouts on sexually transmitted disease and what symptoms are. And if you ask, you know, are you having any strange discharge, any smelly discharge, um, then you can refer them, you know, to somewhere to get tested for that. Because, you know, uh, babies can have problems with their sight and everything being born to a mother that has an STD. So that's something to check out. Um, psychiatric disorders, if they're already uh, seeing a, you know, psychiatrist or MD about a psychiatric disorder and they have medication, they need to talk to the doctor about that and tell them, I'm pregnant, um, is it okay to take this medicine? And sometimes they'll change your medicine because there are some medicines um, that are okay to use while you're pregnant and then some that are not. Um, so that's something to bring up and talk about. Um, comorbidity, if 
the parent is miserable about this. Um, they're going to be miserable about this. If there's codependency going on um, where you have a child parenting a parent or, you know, there's a very, you know, an exclusive type situation, that is not the best environment for this child. Um, so you might have to have a counselor for a referral that does family counseling because you want the dynamic in this family to be healthy for this child um, because that's the number one thing there um, is that the environment is healthy for this child um, and you have a duty to report um, if you see unhealthy things you know going on with a child um, so you know that's something you're going to want to take care of before the baby comes and that's what this whole coaching program is about is to get them caught up you know on the maturity and the you know uh thinking that they're going to need to parent this baby um some children uh do uh form acute stress as a result of pregnancy and infant caregiving some of them are just not mature enough to handle it um and in those cases if a grandparent or no one is willing to step up or they don't have anyone to step up to help them and they are just not capable of it and they are exhibiting symptoms of acute stress or PTSD. <sighs> Unfortunately, um, if they just can't do it, you might have to suggest to them, maybe you need to put them in foster care. Maybe you need to give them up for adoption because it is better for the child to be in a loving environment than to be with a parent who they know does not want them and who is stressed out all the time having to deal with them. Sad but true. Um, child development. Um, now I taught a child development class, um, but you know I'm not gonna give you all that information. Um, so if you wanna teach them about child development, you can get pregnancy books, like there's the what to expect when you're expecting book what to expect the first year book. You can get those and give them to them. Um, or you can get handouts and give them to them. Um, but you want to teach them about child development so they know what to expect. Um, so they're not thinking this kid is born. It should know these things. You know, the kids don't automatically know these things. Everyone has to teach them everything. They have to learn from day one. Their brain's not even wired correctly. Basically, children are born insane. <laughs> And then their brain starts making the connections. That's why kids do stupid things like decide to jump off roofs and things because, you know, they don't have it upstairs yet. <laughs> so you're going to want to teach them about child development so, you know, they understand and they're going to parent better. Um, protective and risk factors. Now, there are some people, there are some young ladies who have been overprotective and they're little princesses um, and they've made no decisions for themselves ever. And that's not good because then they expect the parents to also do the same for their baby, you know. So there's maturity issues uh, that have to be brought up, you know. You're going into an adult situation, into the adult world. Uh, Mom and dad aren't going to take care of you forever and they certainly don't want to take care of your kid forever um, unless the parents are like that and they want to. And then they're doing their children a disservice because that child is never going to learn uh, to be an effective adult. And then their child is never going to learn to be an effective adult. And one day the parents are going to die. Um, and then there's these, you know, adult children that, you know, never learned how to in be an adult. And then they're stuck in the world um, and they're freaking out. So that's not, you know, a good situation for anyone. So you're going to want to talk to them about maturity and being independent. And being there so their child can depend on them, you know. Um, and also, you know, of course, there's risk factors um, to tell them, you know, about being safe, you know, not climbing up ladders and things like that while you're pregnant. Um, uh, again, prevention. You talk about prevention um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there in in the teenage world <laughs> um, and you know you want them to be safe and you don't want them to have problems 
Um, effective caregiving. You're going to have to teach them effective caregiving. The child is going to have to eat. That child is going to have to be bathed and clothed. And you need to teach them that. That's your job to coach them how to do this. So at some point, you know, you, you take your little baby doll and you take the little, you know, wipes and diapers and clothes and, you know, you have them practice on that. And then, you know, later on you can do the thing, you know, like the schools did and, you know, plan parenthood uh, where um, you have an egg or water balloon or whatever. Um, and then, you know, they have to carry that around and do that. Um and uh, not all schools had, you know, a call Planned Parenthood, you know, as part of your home ex or whatever. Um, but they're going to need to learn that. So, you know, that's something you're going to want to teach them is how to take care of the baby, how to handle the baby. You know, um, like this one uh, picks up this baby and doesn't support the head. And like the head's flopping and like you have to support the head of this child, you know. <laughs> oh, scary. Um but anyway, you also have to teach them about their development because they're still teenagers. They are still developing, you know, um, they have to develop a concept of their own development. Like, here's where you are now. Here's where you're going, you know, because when you're a teenager, everything is in the moment. You're still very impulsive in the moment. You know, you're not thinking about what's happening tomorrow or next week, you know, um, you know, you don't have great planning skills, so you need to learn these things. You need to leave, keep yourself on track, you know, check yourself. Um, you know, like the saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you keep yourself, you know, on track for your development. Like I said, just because you got pregnant doesn't mean the world ends for you. And it shouldn't unless you have very unsupportive people around you. Um, who, you know, are punishing you because you got pregnant. Um, development is a continuous process. Teach them that. That like, yeah, now you're young and scared. You're going to get better. You're going to grow up more. Um, just as this child is growing up more. It's a learning process. You're going to learn together. Um, and, you know, you're going to be continually developing. You're going to figure it out, though. You know, you might not understand the right way to put on a diaper to keep it from leaking the first you know month or two you do it but then you know the third month you you decide oh if i tape them down a little bit instead of straight across that's a snugger fit but it doesn't bother their legs too much if i do this so eventually you figure it out it's a continuing process of development um Adolescence is a special time of life. It's when you change from a child to an adult. Um, you know, you need to tell them that, that, you know, you're still growing. We don't expect you to know it all, but, you know, you're going to be a parent now. So it's time to play catch up a little bit, you know, so that you are mature enough to be mature enough to parent this child. Um you need to explain developmental stages. These are what the stages go through. Because like I said, um, if they're expecting their kid to sit up by the time it's three months, they're going to be disappointed. They're expecting the kid to eat solid food um, before it's, you know, able to do that. They're going to give their kid colic. You know, it's important to explain the stages of development to them and even their own. Because they're going, you know, from their teen stage into the early 20s when they start to have logical thinking um, and they need to understand what they're going through as well. Um, let's see. What's important here? Um, physical growth. Now, I'm talking about 11 to 13 year olds. And fortunately, there are 11 to 13 year olds who get pregnant. Society doesn't want to look at that. That's why a lot of people, when I say, you know, they talk about, oh, abortion, I say, okay, so imagine your 11-year-old daughter gets raped. She gets pregnant from that rape, finds out a month later. Are you going to make your 11-year-old daughter have that baby? So some people have a problem with me there, but that's just, just the facts of life. Are you going to make your 11-year-old daughter become a parent? Unfortunately, some people do. This child will never be right, and I'm going to tell you that. I've seen it too many times. That child will never be right. But if you come across someone 
that young, 11 to 13, who is pregnant. Um, talk about the physical growth, how you're not even grown yet. You know, we understand you're not even grown and this is going to affect your body. It's going to affect you because, you know, you're going to stop growing. Because the hormones that is being flooded in your body is going to say, oh, well, we're doing this now, so we're grown enough. So it's going to affect their physical development. You know, they may not be as tall as they could have been if they didn't get pregnant at this age. Um, weight is a thing. You know, preteen girls this age, they're all worried about weight, 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 weight. So you need to explain to them, yes, you're going to gain weight, and that's normal. You're pregnant. You're having a baby. You need to eat right to grow this baby, you know, um, because if they start trying to diet, trying to not look fat, they're hurting the baby. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> now, when you're pregnant, you can have incidences of, you know, where you're feeling good, you know, feeling strong. But, you know, tell them that that can be a thing. But that doesn't mean you're invincible. It doesn't mean you need to go out and fight, you know, so-and-so who said this about you on the bus. Um, you're pregnant. You need to behave. Um, and then uh, also you can tell them, you know, this might be a good time to take up, you know, artistic things. You know, quiet things that they can do. You know, at home, drawing, uh, sewing. Uh, a crochet, whatever, you know, artistic thing they might like to do, um, and that will help them as well, you know, but it will also keep them safe. Um, onset of puberty, changes in the body, um, clearly they, whether they had starting having periods or not, um, clearly they were mature enough to get pregnant, so the puberty has started. But also you need to explain puberty to them and what's going on um, and what to expect after the baby comes, you know, to understand that uh, they're not going to have a period for a while. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're pregnant. And uh, also uh, don't take it for granted that you can't get pregnant right after you had a baby. Because I know a woman who did. <laughs> had a baby nine months later. So, you know, you need to explain these things. Uh, to them because they're not going to know um, and that there are going to be changes in their body um, they're going to get milk in so their breasts are going to enlarge and get hard um, you know they're going to bleed for a while um, and just explain this to them especially ones this young uh, because they're scared you know they don't know what's going to happen and if they don't have the most supportive family around them um, it's going to be even harder on them so you heard our bell. That's all for today. Uh, until next time. Uh, so um, I will leave uh, the uh, link in the description. Uh, so you can help me to continue this um, educational outreach. Um, that's all for now. Until next time.